Okay, <clears throat> so let's first talk about stacks. Stacks. Doctor, did you take the attendance? No, not yet. I will take it a bit later today. Okay. So stack is a data structure that allows you to put data in a particular way. Okay. It kind of resembles like an actual stack, a stack of coins, stack of books. So uh, the logic is that you can keep putting things on top of the other things. Um, so when you put something in, okay, this would go as it uses a, a logic which is called first in, last out, or last in, first out. I hope I've, uh, uh, you guys have studied this before. <clears throat> okay. So just like the data structures that we've studied previously, um, we're also going to have a API for this. But let's first try to understand a few basic principles of a stack. So my stack API, is going to have the same similar methods. If you remember, we used to have insert. Okay, we used to have remove. We used to have search. We used to have size. And we used to have one more, which was? Size is empty. Is empty. Okay, this is what we used to have in the lists. But in a stack, inserting something is called push. Removing something is called pull. Oh. Okay, in stack, we don't have the regular search. We have something called pull. Pull. Okay, because you cannot actually search anything in the stack. The only thing you can get is the top of the stack. I'll show you in a minute what this means. We can still have size, and we can still have is empty. Okay, so that's well, because it's first yeah. in, first out, right? Yes. So now let me explain this. Okay, what a stack looks like. So a stack kind of looks like a container where things go inside this way, and they must go out the same way. So we can say last in. Okay, first out. So, LIFO, okay? So this is the logic we use, last in, first stack. So what happens? If I say something like this, let's say this is some stack, its name is S. If I say S dot push, okay, three, what it means is we like to go and put three over here. So we go and put three in the stack. If I say S dot push five, okay? So five will go on top of three like this. It goes on top of three. If I go S dot push seven, okay? So seven goes on top of five. There you go. If you want to remove something from here, we use S dot pop, okay? So pop, you don't have a choice for removing anything you want. The only thing that you can remove is the one on the top. So right now, this is the top. Okay. Uh, so without specification, you just pop and it'll remove the last, the first one? Yeah, so without providing any parameters. So as that pop is going to remove the top value, the top value. Oh, top value is the one which was inserted at the end. Okay, which was pushed at the end. That's the top value. So once you say yes, the pop, that's going to get rid of the value on the, the top, and top moves to the next one. So this becomes the top. Now if I say s dot pop, okay, we go and look at the top value. Right now this is five, so we'll go and remove five from the stack. Okay, if I say s dot top, s dot top. Okay, so after this is removed, this becomes the top now. Okay, so if I say S the top, top is similar to the search method in a linked list, but now the only difference is it returns only one value. Which value? The one which is on the top. So right now, three is on the top, so it's going to return three. 
So it's not, uh, it won't see any other, only the top one. So it cannot search the other values that down. Exactly. So you cannot go and look at the values under three. There's no way you can do that. Okay. We can also go with the size. Okay. Size would be every time you go and push something in the stack, we can increment it. So it's just a counter. And we can also check is empty. Okay. When the size becomes zero, of course, the stack would be empty. So there you go. That's your API for stack. Okay. What are the applications for stack? Why do we need stack? Uh, stack is a very good data structure if you would like to reverse a string, for example. Okay, I'm going to see this thing a little bit later. So I'm just going to show you some examples now. Let's say I have a string called hello. Okay, somebody asks you to reverse it. Remember last week we were talking about reversing? We look at this particular example where we can reverse a string. So what I can do is I can use a stack. I'll take a stack. I'll put the string character by character in my stack. So first H goes, and then E goes, then L goes, L, and then O. Okay? So here's my stack. So I put everything inside the stack. Now if I remove everything, okay, it's going to give me O, okay, and then it's going to give me L, then the next L, then the E, and then the H. So the worst, okay? But there is another way of doing that, right? Yeah, so what I'm telling you is a stack has a very like good application. Directly to reach E. Sorry? Like the, the reach E directly without removing all L. Yeah, so this is a limitation. If I just want to go and remove E, you cannot do that. You first have to go and remove all of these before you reach this one. Okay, there, so is, no, another, there is no way, uh, another, there is no another way? No, no. If you want to do can that, we, you can use a stack. Can we, use a can, can we use a different container? Let's see, we have a, two containers, and we move some of them to the other one and brought them back, like change the orientation of them. Can we do that? Good. Of course we can. This Okay, what you're asking in particular is a, a, it's a question given in the tutorial. So today we're going to revisit that at the end of the class today. All right, so this is one application. It's used in reversing, okay? Uh, another good application is in arithmetic. How so? So, for example, if I want to do two plus one. All right. So what happens is we can create a stack. <clears throat> we go and put a two over here, plus and one, okay? Now what we can do is we can pop this out. We can have one, then we're gonna have plus, and we get two. The moment you get two op operands, okay, this is called an operand, and an operator, we can evaluate this expression, okay? So arithmetic or expression evaluation. So that's the second popular uh, application. There's many, many other applications for stacks, okay? Um, a few of them are listed here in the slides, so I'm just very quickly go over these. Okay, <clears throat> so web browser history, uh, when you're typing something in the text editor, like Microsoft Word, and you want to undo, all right? Um, so, Okay, in virtual machines in JVM, when you're writing programs, the way the methods are called, okay, they go through stack. Last week we were studying recursion, okay, so within the operating system, uh, the stack is used. So when you call a method again and again and again, basically you're putting everything on the stack. All right, so again, this is not an exhaustive list, it's just two or three examples over here. 
Now, let me show you this particular example. Okay, and see how this is going to work. So I'll remove this jackboard here. <clears throat> okay. So this is some input which is coming in, and we would like to work with the stack to show the output of the program. Okay, so I'm just going to draw a stack over here. So here's my stack. All right. Now when I say push five, this means we'll go and push five over here. Okay, right now which one is the top? Five. Five. Right now this is the top of the stack. Okay, next we say push three. Okay, we're going to put three on the top. So top goes over here now. Next we say size. Okay, so the size is going to return an integer value. Right now the size of the stack is two. So this should give two as a return value. Next we say pop. Okay, pop means the value on the top gets removed. Now remember one thing. The pop and the top, both of these methods, they have to return a value. So it should be the same data type. So for instance, this is a stack of integers, of type integers. So I expect the pop and the top both to return an integer value. So when you say pop, okay, it will go and remove three and return three. If I say top, it will not remove, but simply return the value on the top. That's the major difference between pop and top. Okay, so after doing this pop, the size of my stack is? One. It's one now. Okay, <clears throat> now I say is empty. But is empty simply goes and checks the size. If the size is zero, it returns true or false. Right now the size is one, so it's going to return false. They go and look at pop. Okay, so it's going to go and remove the, the value on the top. So now the stack is empty. If I do an is empty now, that should give me true. Right. If you try to pop from an empty stack, that should give you an error. Okay, so it's up to you how you want to implement this thing. Either you can return a null value or return minus one, or you can throw an exception. Okay, next we say push seven. So let me get rid of these. Okay, push seven. So seven goes on the stack. We have seven now. Next is push nine. So nine goes on top of seven. We say top. So what returns? Top is on nine. So if I say top, that should return nine okay let me say push four so four goes on top of this now this is the top okay next you say size what's the size now the response will be three i think size is three now okay now we say pop so we here pop again means remove four Okay, top gets back over here, so this is the top now. Next we say push six. Okay, so remember this was removed, this does not exist anymore. Now when you say push six, so it's gonna go and put six on the top. Next you say push eight, so that goes and puts eight on the top. Okay, right now this is the top. Then you say pop, so it's gonna get rid of eight and top goes over here. Now if somebody says top, what should return? If I say top? Uh, six. Six, because now six is on the top of the stack. So is this clear? Does it make sense to you? Now in the slide, uh, <clears throat> we're showing you the content of the stack, okay? And the return values for each of these operations. 
OK. Now, getting back to the API. <clears throat> so let's talk about the return values. The push method okay, takes a parameter of the same data type. Let's say it's integer. And it's going to return void, OK? Because it's just inserting. Pop method does not take any parameter. It returns the same data type. So if it was integer, this should be integer. Same goes with the top. This simply returns an integer. Type size should return an integer. OK, and is empty returns Boolean, true or false. All right. Now, uh, so this is clear. This is our stack API. Now let's talk about how do we implement our stack. So we're done with this one. OK. Now let's look at array-based implementation. Can I implement a stack with an array? Let's try to see this. OK. <clears throat> so array-based stacks. All right, so I think we usually draw the array like this. Doctor, it will not be dynamic. We can uh, keep increasing and decreasing as we wish. Very good point. Yeah, that's number one, limitations. OK, the same limitations that we used to have with the arrays. So the size is not dynamic, OK? What about space efficiency? Is it going to be efficient or bad? Uh, bad, because oh. it takes double the space if you want to like uh, have it bigger. Yes. And how about removing and inserting something from the array? Uh, faster, I think. The same. Is it faster? If we implement it as an array, it could be the same, because we're just removing it from the end if we put some by implementation, it could be the same. Do you remember shifting? Yes. Oh, it takes that yeah. Shifting was a problem because it makes you go right and left, and you have to move everything in the array. So maybe we're going to have the same issues here. But let's try to see how this works. <clears throat> so first of all, okay, we have to create an array of certain size. This means we have to define the maximum size for the stack. Once the array is declared, now what we have to do is look at the functions. So we have the push method, we have the top, okay, and we have the pop. So top is easy. All we have to do is remember a variable, the beginning that's going to be zero. And every time we go and insert something, okay, every time we try to push something in, we're going to say top plus plus. Okay? So these are my indexes, 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, and so on. So in my stack, this, let's say this is my stack, if I say s dot push something, push 4, so what's going to happen is I will go and put 4 over here. Now, what we're going to do is in my array, OK, let's say my array, I'm going to say a of the top position equals to the value that needs to be inserted. OK? So that's all. That's my push. So every time we'd like to go and insert something in there, you simply go and put it at the position. OK? So we'll put 4 over here. Next time somebody says, let's start push 5. So we're going to look at this code. Where's the top now? Top is at position one. OK, because last time we incremented top. So what we do is we simply go to position one, put the new value over here, and then we increment the top. So top becomes plus plus. Top becomes one now. OK, so that's very easy. OK, the implementation is really easy. The problem is with pop. What should we do? OK. If I say s dot pop, okay, right now I have 5 over here. And this is my top. So if I say s dot pop, what it means is we have to get rid of this. <clears throat> OK. So 
or what do we do? So what I need to do is I need to take this value, store it in a temporary variable. So I'm going to say something like integer temp equals a of top. Okay, a of top. So what I'm saying, doctor. Whatever is the value on the top, I'm going to put this in temporary. Now, I need to move. I don't have to physically go and remove this. Okay? All I have to do is I have to move this over here. Which I have say to top minus minus. Top minus minus. Or simply over here, I can say top minus minus. No need for this. Uh, I didn't get it, to be honest. So okay. How, how... So we're maintaining the top maintaining the top over here so every time we insert something top moves this way okay every time you pop something top moves the other way so if i was the top of the stack okay the position top would be one if the value at top is five so <clears throat> all i have to do is have to say top minus minus okay let me rewrite this so it's come four. Top minus minus. Okay. So the value of top is going to decrement. I'm talking about the position, not the value itself. So top was one. Okay, it was one. Now it will become zero. Oh, so we don't take five or remove it. We just change the change the position where the top is. That's it. Yeah. So actually we're not removing five. It's still there in the array. What we did was we just moved the position of the top. And here we're going to return temp, the value that you've returned. But what if somebody decides to push something? Let's say I want to push seven. Okay, so again, we go and read the same code. So you're going to say A of top, but what's top now? Zero. Top be zero. zero. Okay, so it'll go to position zero. Plus plus, to so solve it to be one. Yeah. Okay. Then we add seven. Value over there. So seven should come over here, and this should be replaced by seven. So far, so good. Yes. <clears throat> okay. Can we do the Okay. One percent at a time. What was the question again? Uh, did you remove the five? Yeah. We, we actually switch the position of the tip. We actually do not remove five. We're just going to overwrite five with seven. Oh, I see. I see. Okay. Okay. What was the other question? Could Could you repeat the last steps just to make sure that I understand it? Because it's not really the the seven with the five, replacing it with, with each other. Okay, let me do this thing again then. Okay, so in the beginning, <clears throat> top was zero. When I push something, what's going to happen is top comes over here. How? Let me say yes, dot push four. Okay, we're saying go to position top, which is zero right now, copy four in there and then top plus plus, so top comes over here. Top is one. Next, I say s dot push five. So same thing will happen. Okay, we go to the current value of top, the position of top, which is one. We go put five over here and increment. So this becomes top now. Okay, next, after this, we say pop. So what happens is we don't actually go and remove anything, but we simply go and take the value from top. So the value from top is, or, okay, it should be this one, five, okay? So we're gonna take this value and top comes back over here. This becomes top, okay? We take this value five, which is five, and we return five over here. Next, somebody says let's start push seven. Push seven. So what we do is we go and look at the top. This is the top now. Again, 
simply go and insert seven over here. So we're overwriting it. The previous five was not removed. We simply overwrite it. And top increment. So this becomes top again. This will be the top again. Is it clear now? Yes, it, it is clear. I just was confused uh, about why we didn't write seven in the cell of two. Because, but we seem that we ch exchange, we change. We're all right. Yes, yes. Okay. I got it. Okay. So, what could be the problem? So, these are the problems with array based stacks. Okay. Number one, the size is fixed. You cannot increase or decrease the size. Okay. Space efficiency is good and bad. Okay. It's good because finding something will be faster. Okay. How so? Because we're using the top pointer. So we already know where the top is. But how can I check the stack is empty? Yes, anybody? Uh, if, the, if the top minus minus is empty, it will, uh, it will be uh, the whole array is empty. OK, good. Or can I say that if top is 0? Position for top. Yes. Is yes. The beginning, if it is 0, this means the stack is empty. There's nothing over here. Okay, so I, I can say this thing. I can say return top equal equal zero. Okay, what about the size? Uh, but doctor, you can return the size variable. But you, how should we return the size? How should we uh, top top to, yes? Okay, top will tell me the size of the stack. For example, right now, right now, okay, the top is two. The, the, the position two is empty because this is nothing. But this is telling you that we already have two elements on the stack. Okay, so I can simply return top. That should be the size. So there you go. That's your implementation for an AB stack. It's very easy to implement. This is pretty much most of the code that we've written over here, except for the standard Java jargon about class and imports and this and that. Okay, we're going to look at it in a, in a few minutes. All right. Yeah. Any questions about this before we move on? Yeah. Um, for is empty. You said if it's at zero, and it's empty. Yeah. What if zero has a value? Or are you just considering the fact that stacks no. have to be two and up? If there's a value over here, top cannot be here. Top would be somewhere outside zero. Okay. Remember, top is always after. The less value. Oh, okay. So if there's no value, then it's just going to reset at zero. There's no value what? Yeah. I'm saying if, if there's no uh, value at um, zero, then the top will be at zero. Yes. If there's a value, then the top will be one. Yeah. So for when, when I want to return the top, I'm going to return a of top minus one. Okay, the value oh, okay. or the last one. Thank you. Okay, let's look at the list based stack. All right, so think of it like this I have the head of the list, okay, and I'm going to draw it this way. So here's my node, there's the second node, third node, okay, and so on. All right. Now, if my stack kind of looks like this, three, four, five, technically I'm supposed to have three, four, and five over here. All right. So what's the benefit of using this particular data structure instead of an array? Uh, dynamic. It's good. It's dynamic. Good. It's dynamic. Anything else? Space. Okay. Remember the array implementation I showed you on the last slide. We did not do any shifting. There was no shifting because because what? Because we're using the top. Close. We're using the top variable to remember the last position. Okay. If you do not use a top variable, 
then you have to do shifting. Every time you insert something, every time you remove something from the stack, then everything inside the stack or the array should be shifted. <coughs> but if you use a top variable, then you don't have to shift everything. So over implementation is a little better compared to a regular array based implementation. But if you look at this one, okay, that's going to be even faster. Also, the top is always ahead. True? Is that true? Top is always ahead? No. Yeah. No. The head no, is three. No, that would be five. It's not. Okay. Because it goes to the next position. <laughs> Remember, when we were studying the linked list, we said the insertion works really fast if you always insert in the beginning. Okay. So why don't we consider that? Every time we like to insert something or push something in the stack, we'll insert it in the beginning. Okay, so I'll just redraw it. So this particular stack, I can draw it like a list that kind of looks like this. So here's the head. Every time you want to insert something new, it goes on the top. Okay, and that's the bottom of the stack. If I want to push something, Let's say I want to push seven. What I'm going to do is I'm going to create a new node, put seven inside it, new node dot next equals to the head, and what should I do? Anybody? I have to do this. Inserting in the beginning. Come on, we studied this before. Okay, so we create a new node. We're going to say n.next equals to the head. Okay, and that next equals to head. And then we have to update the head. So head <coughs> equals to n. The push is just like insert, so we have to say size plus plus. Why do we have to say size plus plus? Because remember last time we were not using size plus plus or minus minus here. We were using the top variable. Okay, here we don't need the top variable because the head is always the, the top. Okay, what if somebody, somebody wants to remove something? Pop. Okay, so let's say I'd like to remove the head, which is the top value. We want to get rid of this. So I think we do the same steps, but you say the father, we say pop. Okay, we need to remember we need to remember the value before we return it. So we have to say integer temp equals to head dot value. Okay, so temporarily we store it. So right now this is seven. We're gonna put seven in the temp. And then I'm gonna remove this node. How do you get rid of this node? Add equals to head the next. Head right. next. Okay, so now head points over here. So we've forgotten this node, this node is gone. And now, of course, size minus minus, and we're going to return the temp value. Okay, so first we're good. So this is your push, and here's your pop. But what about top? How do we do the top method? Well, we want to remove it or what? No, it comes simply returns a value of the head. So we're going to say head dot value. Value. Okay, that's it. This is your top. Okay, what about size? Okay, how can we check the size of the stack? Remember, we're maintaining the size. Size plus plus? Yeah. Simply return the size. Yes. Doctor? Yes. And method top of, uh, for uh, arrays, uh, uh, we will write uh, return uh, A top minus one. Yeah. 
because yes, it's one before the last one. Okay. <clears throat> so here is empty. Okay, that's easy. All I have to do is say return if head is not equal to null. Okay, so there you go. This is your entire <coughs> uh, stack implementation using linked lists. But if you compare the amount of code that you've written, this would be a little bit more than the code that you've written over here. Okay, but which one is more efficient? If we are here, I want I want to ask you about something. Sure. I was studying the previous lectures and. Uh, uh, you remember the, 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 it's like you put it like the trains uh, and squares, head and tail. And if you want to search or remove something, you remember it or no? Are you talking about the link list or what? Yes, link list, right. Yeah, so we have the head and we have the tail, yes. Yes, and if we want, for example, to here, to remove number seven, did we you we, 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 you find uh, you defined uh, seven as x? Is it you just defined it as x uh, like uh, initially, or is it stored as x in the Java no. data? What, what do you mean x? Where is x? For example, if I want to remove here, I have my notes. I want to remove two. I say x dot next uh, temp dot x equal x. No, this is a ray for the, you're talking about this particular one. This is a ray based implementation. There's no need for temp. This is temp is just an integer. This I, I know I, I'm asking about x. Is it stored inside or do you just say it's, uh, it's, it's I, I don't know. What do you mean X? Where is X? I don't have X anywhere on the slide. Yes, not this slide. This is the problem. So? It was in the previous slide. Which slide? The, the previous lecture, sorry. Oh, if you have a question about the previous lecture, let's discuss this later on. Sorry, but it was a small, but you, you, I think you, you misunderstood me. It was like a small thing. Okay, we, we can talk about this a bit later. Once we finish, no. we can ask me about okay. it. Uh, uh, doctor, I, have, I, have, I have a question for the array. Yeah. For, uh, for the pop. Uh, yes. What was the code? Is it uh, minus minus top? Not top minus minus? See, the thing is, the top is always going to be one after this value because we're starting in the beginning top is here yes once I insert something here top moves once I insert yes. something top moves this becomes top okay and so on they that's how you want to implement it if you want to start at minus one okay that's also fine so if you look at the code given in the book I, I think it's starting at minus one and the code that I've written on github Okay, which is already there, that's probably starting at zero. So it doesn't really matter uh, where you're starting, okay, in this particular implementation, top is over here. So if top is over here, this means actually the value, if somebody asks for top, I'm going to return this value, which would be top minus one. For the pop, I mean, not the top. So for the pop, yeah, same thing. I mean, we're going to decrement the top. So if the top is over here, I want to get rid of seven. Okay, I will say minus minus top. So top comes over here and this becomes the top. All right, so it's gonna go and take this value, which is seven, and then it's going to return that. So right now top is over here. Okay. okay. Which means next time if I like to insert something, I'll push it over here and then move the top to this position. Okay. Voting. Is this clear now? Top minus minus would it mean? Would be wrong. What is it? It should be minus minus top. Yes. And the top minus minus would be wrong. Where is I top? Yes, wrong. Sorry. In the uh, the one you just edited. If we say top minus minus, it will be wrong. 
Yeah, that would be wrong. Why? Because that, that is going to give you this value, which is empty right now. Mm. Okay, and then after giving you this value, it's going to decrement, go back over here, which is wrong. Oh. It should be minus one stop. Okay, so let's look at the, the code on GitHub. Okay. So here we have stack. <clears throat> okay, this is stack implementation with arrays. So we have two classes over here. It's a stack to Java. <clears throat> this is a ray-based implementation. So we create a size variable. We use top. Even though you don't need size, you can work with either. Here's the stack constructor. Okay, the constructor is taking a parameter, which is defining the maximum size of the array. But if this is necessary, because without this, you cannot instantiate the, like, the array which means you won't be able to work with the stack. Here's a push. Okay, so yeah, we did not consider this. You have to be careful about that. If you exceed the limit of the stack, you should throw an error. Otherwise, simply top plus plus, copy the value in there, size plus plus, and that's it. For pop, okay, so we need to check if the stack is already empty. If it is empty, you throw an error message or return minus one. Decrement top, decrement size, and then return the value on the top. Okay, so the val if somebody says top, so we're going to return top minus one. Okay, or simply minus minus top. Um, is empty if the size is zero, and size simply returns the size variable. Okay, so it's very simple, very easy. Let's look at the stack implementation with link structures. But before we look at the link structures, let's look at the node class. <clears throat> Here's a node class. So we're defining integer ID as a value. And we have node next. Okay, so these are the default constructors. Uh, this is overloaded constructor taking the value and you initialize the ID to value. Let's go and look at the stack class now. So here's a stack class. Again, we're defining a size. We're defining node top or head, okay? Um, so stack default constructor size is zero. In the beginning head is going to be null. So is empty method, you simply go and check if node is null or so if the top is null or head is null. Size simply returns the size. Push, okay, like I explained to you, we try to insert in the beginning. So node temp equals new node, temp.next equals to top or head, and then we simply say head equals to or tap top equals to temp and size plus plus. Okay, so it's important that this is dynamic, which means the size is not really a problem. You can increase as much as the hardware permits you. Okay, returning the value on the top. So yeah, this is a simple check that you have to put. If the top is null, you should not be able to return anything. You should return null or return minus one. Otherwise, you could return the value uh, in the node on the head or the top. And to pop, you simply remove the first node. How do we do that? You say, okay, top equals top.next, or head equals head.next, and you turn the value. So that's it. This is your stack data structure. Now, do we have any questions about this before we move on to the next topic? So I'm just showing you where we are right now. If just finished with the array-based implementation and link the space implementation. Now we're going to look at queue data structure. So far, so good? Yes. <clears throat> yes, Doctor, thank you. OK, so if you look at the slides, you'll find more code, some examples of stacks, OK, parentheses matching. This is the code for that. This is HTML processing. Okay, we have tags. We can do stack for this. Okay, evaluation of expressions. Or again, the computers use stack for this. We can evaluate the expressions using the stack. Okay, here's a code for this. 
right? Here's an example on how this is going to work. Okay. Moving on to the next topic, which is queues. So as the name implies, standing in a queue, yeah? You, <clears throat> right now, because of social distancing, any restaurant you go to, you have to stand in a queue, okay? So we're already familiar with queues and how queues work. But uh, let's look at the definitions here. So we're going to have a similar kind of API, okay? Let's try to understand the API. So again, we have insert, we have search, we have remove, okay, we'll have is empty, and we'll have the size, okay? So in the queue, insert method, we call this thing nq, okay, call nq. In Java's collections framework implementation, they call it push, very similar to SAC. Search, okay? In stack, we used to have top. Here, we, they call this thing front. Okay, it's very similar to stack's operation. Remove, okay, is DQ. DQ, which is remove something. So again, what we do is we simply go and remove from the front. Is empty is just the same and size is just the same. But let's try to understand how this works. So Q looks like this. Things go in one direction and come out from the other direction. Okay? So thing that goes in first comes out first. First in, first out. Okay. Uh, doctor, your voice is uh, cutting. I cannot hear you. I still cannot hear me. I can hear, but it's it's like uh, for a second, two second, and comes back. Is it happening with everybody or just you? Because the problem could be only on your side. I, I don't know about the other people. It's good with me. Yeah, I can hear you fine. Okay. Yeah, so you can check your connection, disconnect, reconnect again. Hopefully, they should be fine. <clears throat> All right. So we were talking about first in, first out. Things go in in one direction and come out from the other direction. Okay? So the thing that is present, okay, in the beginning of the queue is called front. Okay? Just like the top of the stack. So we have front. Now... Just like before, whenever we want to NQ, we're going to go and push something at the end, okay? NQ something at the end. And every time you remove something, okay, if you move from the front, it goes away. So naturally, now the things will be moving in this direction, okay? So it implies that there was going to be some shifting. Every time you remove something, you have to move things towards the left, okay? This means that whenever we want to implement a queue using an array, we have to be really careful because there could be shifting involved. All right. <clears throat> so again, what we did before, return value. So NQ can take a value, integer, and insert this thing in my queue. Front would simply return the same data type. Let's say the queue is of type in integer. So it's going to return integer. DQ does the same as what pop did for stack. So it removes something from the queue, DQ. Okay, of course it returns a teacher. Is empty, of course, is going to be Boolean. And size is going to be in teacher. Simply returns a size to Q. Okay, let's try to understand how things work. So I'm going to go take an example here in the slides. Okay, I'm going to work with this. So here's my queue. Okay, here's my queue. Let's say this queue is called Q. Now, if I say Q.nq, remember in the beginning it's empty. So front is here. Okay, if I want to implement an array, okay, I can go and look at this. But we'll see this thing in a minute. All right, so NQ5, 5 goes over here. Okay, next in Q3. 
Okay, but I'm not drawing boxes because this is not an array. Okay, it's just to give you an idea. Next in Q3. So again, we insert from the back. Okay, so three comes over here. Now front is this one. Okay, next when we say DQ, we DQ from the front. So five will go away. Okay, five is returned back from the DQ operation. And this becomes a front. Now three is the front. All right, next I say in Q7. So seven goes where? Before three or after three? Before three. No, seven will go this way. Yes, seven comes here. Yeah, okay. I mean, yes, yes. So this is the entrance. There's only one entrance. You can go only in this direction. This is the direction. Next, we say DQ. DQ again means you move from the front. So we're going to get rid of this, and front moves here. Excuse me. Okay, next we say first or front. Okay, so it's going to give the value which is at the front. Right now, this is seven. So it's going to return seven. Next we say DQ. So again, that's going to remove this. Okay, what happens to front? Is it, it will be empty. It will be empty. Okay, should be pointing to nothing. If I say DQ again, Okay, my queue is empty. I'm not supposed to remove anything. So this is supposed to give me an error message or a null value or minus one or something of this sort. If I say is empty now, of course the queue is empty. There's nothing there. Okay, so it should return true. Now when I say in Q9, okay, so nine goes over here. And this becomes a front now. Okay, and Q7, so seven goes here. Okay, is seven now the front or not? No, no. No, it will, okay. it will still be nine. All right, next we see size. So what happens? We return two. We're going to return two. We only have two elements in the queue, so we return two. <clears throat> now we say in queue three. So three goes here. Okay, and Q5, 5 goes here. DQ, what happens? <coughs> Remove uh, 9. 9 what will be. Remove 9, and this becomes a front now. Okay, now 7 is on the front. Is this clear? Dr. So what did first do? First. first return, it's just like top. First or front. Oh, okay. So the value on the top, if I say first now or front now, that should give me seven. Okay. okay. So <clears throat> see, this is the API according to this particular book. If you look at a different book, you're going to find different names, okay? In Java's collection implementation, NQ is still called push, <clears throat> DQ is still called pop, okay? Uh, first, the front is still called top, but the operation is going to be exactly what I've just explained to you. This does not change. All right, this is clear. Let's move on. Some applications, okay, reading lists uh, within the computers, printers, okay, uh, <clears throat> running multiple applications on your computer, and so on. So it can be many, many, many different applications. So let's try to understand how do we implement this using an array, and then we'll try to look at it from a linked list perspective. <clears throat> okay, so I'm going to create an array. Okay, it's a limited size. Size is six, so the maximum size for this queue, which implements this array, is six. Okay, now we're going to define the front or the first values in the beginning. Let's say it's over here. <clears throat> so what we do is we use a formula, okay, that allows us to slide through. 
the formula is r equals f plus size mod n okay f is the index position for the front element size is the number of stored elements the current size <clears throat> and n is the maximum size of the array okay so this formula is really important i'm going to put this over here so you remember it okay r equals f plus size modulus <clears throat> and n is the size the maximum size of the area so right now this is going to be six mod okay and whatever the value gets over here but yeah, let's try to understand why, why are we talking about this formula okay so Here's my Q. If somebody says Q dot NQ three, <coughs> in the beginning the SAF is at zero. So what we're going to do is we're going to put three over here. Okay, we use a formula. So front is zero, size is zero, so zero plus zero is zero. 0 modulus 6 is going to give me 0, which means we'll go and put 3 over here. Okay. Once you've inserted this value, we need to change the front. Okay. This is the front. Oh, yeah. <clears throat> the size becomes 1. Okay. Right now, size, size variable is 1. Are you with me so far? So good? <clears throat> Okay, we didn't do much. Simply inserted three at the rear, R is the rear of my queue, at the end of the queue. Okay, remember this is my queue. So we put things over here like this. Three goes in. Okay, let's say somebody says Q dot NQ5. <clears throat> Again, we use the same formula. So we're gonna say F front position zero plus size size is one now so zero plus one is one one modulus six is one okay so it says go and <clears throat> add this value in position one so go put five over here we increment the size size now becomes two so <clears throat> so three is over here next comes five five goes over here Let's say Q dot NQ seven. <coughs> so again, we use the same formula to find the rear. Okay, so friend is still at position zero, plus size is two, zero plus two is two, two modulus six still gives you two. Okay, so position two, we go put seven over here. So seven goes over here. Okay. Now, <clears throat> let's say we want to DQ, remove something. Okay, for DQ, all we have to do is, okay, we don't need to remember this. We simply move F over here. F comes over here. All right, so F plus plus. That's what we did. Just increment F. <clears throat> but there's a little formula for this also. Okay, we're gonna see this thing in a minute. Again, you have to do modulus with n. All right. <clears throat> if I want to nq again, nq9. So we use the same formula. Now the front is, <clears throat> where's the front now? One. Good. Front is now here. Okay. Position one. So you're going to say one plus size. Remember when you dq, the size should have shrunk. So it's two now. <clears throat> so one plus two is three. Three modulus six is still three. So you go and go to position three and insert nine over here. Okay. I'm going to insert one more. <clears throat> Q dot NQ eight. Okay. By the way, size is three now. NQ eight. So again, we go over here. Front is position one plus Right now, the size is three, so one plus three is four. Four modulus six is four, so we can go and put eight over here. Increment the size, size becomes four. Insert one more. <clears throat> OK, 
okay, NQ, I don't know, four. So again, friend is one, one plus size four is five. So go and put this value over here, okay? Now, can somebody tell me, is the Q full or not? <clears throat> right now, as it stands, is the Q full or not? I think yes. Yes, yes. Uh, but doctor, there is something confusing. When we reached <laughs> position four in the array, we are saying that the size is four wide, it is five. No, it's not five. Remember we did a DQ? <clears throat> DQ means remove. Oh, yes, yes. So what we did was we removed we moved the F. <clears throat> Technically, this should have gone. Okay, this should have been removed. But we did not actually remove it, it's still there. All we did was we moved the F over here. So right now, my list is not full. Okay, the size of my list is after I've inserted four. Everything would be shifted. <clears throat> so the only reason that we're looking at this formula is we want to avoid shifting. Okay, how so? I'll show you in a minute. Let's try to look at it. Let's say I want to insert NQ2. <clears throat> okay. So we try to insert this over here in, in my list. The size is five. Is my list full? Yes, no? Yes. Yes. No. What's the size of the array? The maximum it can take is six elements. Right now, my size is five. Okay, I have room for one more element. This does not exist. It's gone. <clears throat> the friend is here. So, so you considered the first one at all? No, we removed it, remember? We removed oh, I see, I see. Okay, uh, I didn't see that. DQ is removing. Okay, remove. So we remove that. But we didn't remove, we, we, we just changed the front. Indeed. We just changed the front. Physically, we did not remove it, but it's still there. But we can overwrite it. That's the point. Now, when I try to insert or NQ2, what's going to happen is we go use the same formula. So friend is 1 plus size 5. Okay, 6 modulus 6 is going to give you 0, OK? Which means go yes. to position 0. And here, we're going to replace this with 2. Increment the size, size we can six, and there you go. Now your queue is full after you, you inserted this one. <clears throat> okay, now let's try to remove a few more things. Let's do this. So I'm going to use a different color. So Q dot. So you said uh, that first in, first out. Yes. Uh, but if we insert the two at the beginning. Oh, so remember, look at this. <clears throat> okay, what happened? What's happening in my queue? So first we inserted three, and Q3, yes. and then Q5, then in Q7. Then yes. I DQ, so this goes away. Yes. Okay. Then I in Q9, then I in Q8, then I in Q4, then I in Q2. So still, first in, first out. If I try to DQ now, which one should go away now? The five. Five should go away. OK, this should be removed. Like my front is at position. One, which contains five. Yes. So what's going to happen is <clears throat> we're going to move F. We're going to F plus plus. So F goes over here. Size minus minus, size becomes five. OK? So for all intents and purposes, this does not exist anymore. We forgot it. So this is the beginning. This is the front of the queue. So you're going to have seven, nine, eight, four. And after four, which one comes? Nothing. Two. two. We can say two, but how can we do it? Say, so think of it like a circle. Yes. OK. Uh, <clears throat> so what's happening is, think of it like this. So here's the front. But right now, I have seven. Then I have nine, then I have eight, then I have four, then I have two. Yes. Okay, this is the last thing. There's nothing after it. If I want to remove something now, if I say Q dot DQ again, okay, what's going to happen is we're going to move F over here. 
Okay, so F goes to the next one. This becomes it. For all intents and purposes, this is gone. If I wanted NQ, okay, try to NQ something. Let's try to NQ one. So use the same formula. We go over here. Where's the front now? What's the position for front? Three. Three. Three plus the current size. What's the current size? It should be four, by the way. Should be four, right? We removed uh, the last thing. Okay. So three plus four is seven. Seven modulus six is going to give you one. Okay. Which means you can go to position one and insert the new value over here. So this one is going to be one. Okay. In other words, after two, insert one. Okay. Q dot DQ again. <clears throat> okay, by the way, after you insert, the sizes become five. Okay, DQ, remove something from this. How do we do that? Same what we did before, F plus plus. Okay, so this becomes the front now. So this is gone and this is gone. So far, so good. Does it make sense? So far, so good. But if we keep saying F plus uh, plus, how can we in the code make the F uh, point at the beginning so we can decode it? Very good. So we're going to keep saying F plus plus until it reaches the end. This becomes okay. F. So whenever it becomes six, okay, we're going to modulus. Mod it with six, it becomes zero again. Uh, OK. OK, so it's going around and around and around like this. Yes. So basically, what we've done over here is they've kind of implemented a, uh, a round circular array. OK, in reality, it does not exist. But because of this formula, we're using this formula, so we can simulate it. We can look at it as if it's a circular array. It keeps going around and around and around. All we need to do is we need to remember the front and we need to remember the sides. Just the two things. <clears throat> okay. Also, Victor, if we yeah. didn't do anything uh, w uh, and we uh, still in queue, in queue, in queue, it will uh, put a value uh, into another value. I mean, uh, if we didn't acquire, uh, decue anything in the array, like uh, in, uh, we, may, we we leave it to one, seven, whatever it is, then we reach five, then uh, in queue another number, it will uh, put it in index two, in index zero. Very good. Okay, so again, whenever you're in queuing something, we have to make sure the list is not, uh, sorry, the, uh, the queue is not already full. Okay, so we have to be careful with the size. Size must not exceed the maximum size. Okay, so if you do that, you won't be able to overwrite it. You'll just stop. So if the queue is already full, okay, the moment you reach F, which is pointing to the rear, the same rear, this means you cannot insert anymore. We can use the size variable. We have to implement that is empty and also is full. Okay, so I think I've explained all of this over here. <clears throat> this is the code for it. We're going to look at the code uh, on GitHub. Okay, let's have a look at the code on GitHub. Thank you. <clears throat> This is Q implementation with arrays. So there you go. We define an array, we define a size, and we define a top. Top is the same as front or first. Okay, so default, again, because this is an array, so you have to provide the maximum size. We initialize the array with the maximum size. Okay, it's a empty method. If the size is zero, we return zero, or sorry, true. <clears throat> size simply returns the size. 
Okay, here's the NQ method. So let's say is a variable that we would like to insert. Now we check if size is larger than the maximum size. Okay, we're going to return throw an error message or return error. Q is full or the list is full. We cannot return anything. Otherwise, here's my formula. Okay, so position equals top plus size modulus the maximum size. You go and insert the value at that position and size plus plus. For DQ, very similar. <clears throat> so if it is empty, return an error message, throw minus one or an exception. Okay. And then we take a temporary value and we put the top value in there. Again, we use the formula for finding the new front, size minus minus, and then we return 10. And top simply, or top or front, simply returns the value of the top or the front. OK. <clears throat> so the only thing different between this implementation and the stack implementation is here we're using a formula. All right. If this looks very complicated, OK, maybe some of you are confused about this. Let's look at the <clears throat> uh, linked list based implementation. Perhaps that's going to be a bit easier. So here's a head. OK, and we're going to maintain notes like this. That it's better to have a tail pointer. Now, if somebody says Q dot NQ, what do I have to do? NQ means we add at the end. OK, so what we're going to do is create a new node and put the new value inside it, OK? And dot next would be null. <clears throat> and then we have to do this, link the tail with the new pointer. So it goes at the end, OK? So here it will be very simple. We're going to say node n equals new node, OK? Let's say the x value is passed to you. And then we say <coughs> tail dot next equals to n. And of course, we have to move the tail. So this becomes a tail now. So you're going to say the tail equals to n, or tail equals tail dot next. Of course, size plus plus, and we're done. <clears throat> OK. What if somebody says q dot dq? You want to remove the first node. But how do we do that? We've seen this thing before. Anybody? Are we head returning to head, head, head equal head dot next? Good. Head equals to head dot next. <clears throat> okay, but before this, we have to return this value. Yes, we return head. Uh, we make an integer head dot value and uh, return. Yes. And of course, size minus minus, and we're going to return temp. <clears throat> OK, so that's in Q, that's DQ. How do we return the front or the top value? Return the head of the, of the top or the tail of the Yeah, so yeah, we go with the head, OK, because that's, the, that's where the top of the front value is. So you simply say return head dot <coughs> value. That's it. OK, how do we check if the Q is empty? Oh, is equal, is equal to zero. OK, either size is equal to equal zero or head equals null. All right. Doctor, rear means the end and front the beginning, right? Yes. So front is just like the head in the list, and tail is the rear. OK. So which one is easier? Do you like this one? Easier to implement, or do you like this one? <clears throat> Yes, uh, array based is uh, complicated. Yeah, it's, so it's confusing. It's a bit complicated because we're using a formula so that yes. we can visualize the array as if it's a circular array. In reality, it does not exist, but the formula makes it feel like it's a circular array. But this is easier to implement. It's also even more efficient, okay? Although it takes a little bit more space. <clears throat> so here's a code for this. 
Okay, so again, we're using the same node class. The Q class is different, so let's have a look at it. Okay, so again, we're going to define top or head and tail. Here's the size. Okay, in the beginning, everything is null, size is zero. If it's empty, the, okay, we check if the top is null, return true if it is null, size simply return size. Here's the NQ method. So we have, <clears throat> if the list is already empty, we go and create a new node and have top and tail point to it. Otherwise, we're gonna say tail.next equals new node and tail equals tail.next, size plus plus. Same goes with DQ. So again, if the list is already empty, okay, it should return empty, throw an error message. Otherwise, temporary, copy the, the top or the head value into temp, a temporary variable top equals top.next or head equals head.next, size minus minus, and we return the temp. Okay, so here's a little if condition. This is called embedded if condition. I think we talked about this before. So we turn the value on the top. So simply you're checking if the list is already empty, okay, they will return null, nothing, minus one, error. Otherwise, we're going to return the value on the top, which is on the head. So there you go, that's our, uh, uh, Q implementation. But if you look at the Q implementation in Java, it's a library, okay? They implement this using add. So NQ is the same as add. DQ is remove. First is element, okay? Size is size, and is empty is empty. Sometimes these return special values, like offer, poll, peak, depends on the implementation. Okay, here's an example from draw and drop and scheduler. Okay, for, for all the CCIS students, you will have to take a course called operating system, uh, which usually is taken after this course. You can take it next semester after this one. So there you're going to talk about lots of implementation of queues uh, and how do they work within the operating systems. Okay, any questions for now? <clears throat>